Okay, it's the same night as <laughs> still driving home. <clears throat> but I thought of another story <laughs> that I wanted to tell you. And this falls in the category of how did this man ever live to be 57 going on 58 years old? So again, this is a Minnesota farm story. Um, we had this, we had this truck, uh, and it had this long bed on the back. This is a truck that Papa had actually bought when we lived in Idaho, and it had what was called a beet bed, uh, and uh, it was a long bed. And anyway, it doesn't really matter. But it's a big farm truck, and uh, so so the old farmhouse that was on the farm they had in Carlstead instead of it, Papa had turned it into his into his shop so he kept his equipment and stuff in there including his air compressor and this old truck had one tire on one side in the back that had a slow leak in it and it it so but it turns out that that where where the air compressor was the hose was just long enough to reach that tire if Papa backed up right next to the building. So one day, but he didn't want to hit the building. He wanted to be very, very close to the building, but he didn't actually want to hit the building. So, so one day he has me directing him as he's backing this truck up. And, um, and so I'm saying, you know, come on back, come on back, come on back. And then I say, whoa. And as soon as I say, whoa, he lets off and stops backing up. Okay, now, this comes into the how stupid are you, man, category. Because it's true. This was really stupid. So, so I yell, whoa. He lets off. I think he stopped. So I go to walk between the back of the truck and the house. Now keep in mind, the truck is at an angle. So, so this is the corner of the bed of the truck is, is, is closest to the house. As soon, <laughs> as soon as I step behind, go to go past the edge of that truck, <laughs> to, to go get the air compressor hose, he backs up again. And he catches me right in the middle of my chest and crushes me against the house. <laughs> it's funny now, but it was scary then. I mean, it was terrifying. So, and I could hear, I don't think it actually broke my ribs, but I could hear things cracking. I assume it was probably the the tendons or, the, you know, whatever, the connective, the connective tissue. <laughs> and so, so I can't say anything, right? I mean, he's crushed. I mean, I can't make any noise. I can't, but, but I think, so what happens though, as soon as he hits me, <laughs> as soon as he hits me, he lets off the gas because <laughs> I assume that he thinks <laughs> that he's hit the building. <laughs> but as so, so he lets off again. So he lets off and the truck and the truck rolls forward just a little bit. <laughs> and so I of course thankful to still be alive. Sorry, I got to change lanes. Thanks. I am <laughs> thankful that I haven't been killed. I roll onto the ground on the side of the truck where, again, where he can't see me. And like, I mean, I am hurting. I can't breathe and I, and I know that I am just scared to death. Even, even thinking back, back on it now, it's, it's funny and scary at the same time. So, but, but just so you know, this will tell you somewhat about, about my relationship with my father. Even though I might have very well had broken ribs, I didn't know, but I was in a fair amount of pain. Even though I couldn't breathe, I got my ass up, excuse me, yeah, but I did, off that ground, and I never said a word. I mean, I never said a word, because I just knew I would just get yelled at for being so stupid. Now, the thing is, I probably should have been. <laughs> I 
I probably should have been yelled at for being so stupid. But nonetheless, so yeah, so so there's that. And yeah, the fact, I mean, again, it's like I said in an earlier video, there was a lot of stress living there in Carlstead out on that stupid farm. But uh, anyway, okay, I, I just had to share that story. It, it, it strikes me as quite funny. And, and there's a lesson in there though, always think things through, uh, which I've never been accused of doing. Okay, thanks for watching, love you.